I don't even have words to describe really this experience. You know, you there's all these complications you think you may have, just being pregnant scary, and then all of a sudden having this complication and infections. And I don't want to go anywhere or do anything. And I don't want to even go to out to eat or to the grocery store or to the mall. And I'm uncomfortable, I don't feel well. It's a little bit scary too, being pregnant and not knowing if things are safe to take for my baby, you know, medications that I can take and not take. Mrs. Rosenblum, come on in. It's your turn. I'm soon here, Annette. I'm soon here, Annette. I'm soon here, Annette. Each of these guys that you see out here are waiting for a doctor to attend to them. Some of them have actually spent days waiting for their turn. It's awful. You know, I have um, my baby at home. I have two. I have a two-year-old and a newborn, and after the C-section, I'm just leaking everywhere. And I went and took a nap, and I woke up, and I was soaking wet. So we knew something was wrong. We went back and had a discussion with the urologist I was seeing at the time who didn't know how to deal with anything like this. So my doctor sent me to Dr. Thomas. My name is Dr. Sherry Thomas, and I'm an obstetrician gynecologist. So I help women who have bladder problems and problems after uh, childbirth. So I'm Dr. Thomas. What's your name? Nisma Maria. Nisma Maria. Maria Nisma. Yeah. It's very nice to meet you. Yeah. I, I Hi, I know. I'm going to be your doctor today. Yeah. So in the United States, when a woman becomes pregnant, she has prenatal care, and we follow the pregnancy. If the baby's going to be large, then the patient electively has a cesarean section, or if a woman goes into labor and the baby doesn't look like it's going to come out of the birth canal, then she has a cesarean section, and that's done in a hospital. In Africa, there is no access to health care, and women generally deliver in their little community by a layperson, um, not even a midwife. And usually it's somebody in the town that's been doing deliveries. And so if a woman goes into labor and, and she has a large baby or a small pelvis or both, she may labor for days or weeks. And if she doesn't die, she then develops a problem with the birth canal. Why did you come to the hospital? A hole. A hole. Yeah. Where's the hole? In between. <laughs> It's here, no. In your bladder? Yeah. It's called a fistula, it's quite devastating. In the United States, our prenatal care is so good that women, when they become pregnant, start seeing a doctor. So we just don't see fistulas in our country, and if they do occur, we're able to fix them very quickly. In Africa, fistulas are so common because prenatal health is non-existent, healthcare is poor, and women are just not having any medical care. Okay, so... You, with the hole in your bladder, you must be leaking urine or having a discharge? No, I don't leak You leak stool. The stool comes out all the time. Yeah. When did you have your baby? My baby. I have last year. In 2002. You had your baby 10 years ago? Yeah. And since then, you've been having stool come out? Yeah. Wow. Oh, you just can't imagine what it would be like to constantly leak urine or stool. In Africa, women don't have access to sanitary napkins or pads. So as a result, they're using everything they can to try to absorb the leakage. When I was examining women, they'd bring their little black plastic bags, which looked like hefty trash bags that they'd open up and they'd sit on. And the smell of urine is just uh, overwhelming. So let's talk about your first pregnancy. You delivered it full term, no problems. What kind of experience did you have with that? You know, my first pregnancy, you don't know what to expect, and even his delivery was just super easy and amazing. So having this happen with your second pregnancy, it, it must be devastating. My life, I was not comfortable when I, at, I am at home with my family. I feel shame like that. You said you feel shame? Yeah. Even with your family? Yeah. Because of the smell? 
Uh-huh. How about, uh, do you have a husband? The husband I don't have. He left you? Yeah. Because of the smell? Yeah. How's it been with your husband? What's, how's he holding up? It's hard for him. You know, he's concerned and, you know, how do you, how are you intimate with someone when you're leaking urine? That's embarrassing and gross. For me, I felt like as a husband and, and seeing the person that I love suffering so much, it was really hard to, to see that. And so it was, my role was really to give her support. Of course, Laura wanted to hide it from everyone. And my mental attitude about it was, we just have to live our life as, as normally as we could and take care of Laura first and the baby and, and Ben also. See? Wow. OK, Mrs. Rosenblum, I'm going to take your temperature and your blood pressure. Laura had developed her problem as a result of pregnancy, and her husband works for a company, and they have insurance through his company. And as a result, she was able to see a doctor who then referred her to me. So her hospital bill was taken care of, her medications were taken care of. I ordered tests. I was able to do an ultrasound of her kidneys. And all those tests were taken care of by insurance. In Africa, women have no money and have no access to health care. I went there and I saw the, the clinic, but they said that bring money, and I had no money. So many of the patients we saw were told if they bring what was the equivalent of between 50 and 100 US dollars to the hospital, they'd have a doctor that would fix their problem. But most of them never had that money. <laughs> they said to bring money? Yeah. How much money did they say to bring? A hundred thousand. Yeah. So that's, um, gosh, that's a little under 50 US dollars. Yeah. Each time you come to the clinic, you have to come with your own caretaker. And sometimes even with your own meals because the healthcare situation, the nurse aides and so on, they are not enough to take care of your needs. It's not like back there in the US where you just bring the patient and then the nurses and so on take care of them. People have to come with their own caretakers all the way from home, which increases the cost of health care. My name is Harimana Makula. I'm the chairperson and the founder of Women at Work International. Today, we are here in Jinja working with the patients that have fistula. And we brought American doctors to work with us to help us and show us new technology. Halima asked me to come to Africa and help with her nonprofit organization, help fix the women's fistulas. What people don't realize is Halima is a very well-known singer in Africa. It amazes me that somebody with her busy schedule took the time out to meet us at the plane, arrange for everything, but not just arrange for it. She was there with plenty of help to get us to where we were going. We had a, an entire day of meeting several people and a press conference. Dr. Sherry Thomas, one of my heroes, is in Africa tonight. Dr. Thomas, tell us, how do you change the lives of these women? Thank you, Jane. Well, we're here in Jinja, Uganda, where women have traveled many miles, and they spend many years seeking the care that we're providing here. Good night. Nisima Mary. Jessica. 
All these ladies here have heard about the Fistula camp, which hopefully will change their lives forever. Wendy, my good friend and confidant who came with me to Africa on her own and instead of spending two weeks hiking to some magical place, Wendy would come in every day and work in the operating room, opening sutures and handing me equipment and turning on lights when the electricity went out. Oh, you had a good gown this time. It has all the ties on it. Okay, so these are all the patients we've done. We've done 25 patients last week. As you can see just by looking outside, all those women are waiting for surgery. Not a hopeless case. The sun is away. Life is sometimes unfair. Whatever in the world that I can do you see through My first trip to Africa, Eritrea was so life-changing for me. I traveled to third world countries as a kid. My father was in the military and I understood what life was like in a third world country. I never knew what medical care was like. And once you're actually administering medical care, when you know it can be so much better, it, it just makes you want to keep going back. How do you feel? Darren probably learned more about my anatomy than he ever wanted to, but he was there every step along the way, holding my hand and reassuring me and taking care of me, and he was just amazing. And he listened to me complain a lot. And, and he's still sitting here with a smile on his face. He had a lot to complain about. <laughs> it was that hard. Was, it was hard. That was a tough time. Tried to be graceful. It's hard when your bladder's leaking. <laughs> Everything is better now, and I'm back to life and my kids. I have so much gratitude. Thank you for your excellent work.